Hello world, first in your roundup of hacking news, a scary new hack, iLeakage, can force browsers to give hackers your passwords, the contents of your emails, and pretty much anything. And as of now, there's no patch for it. Here's how it works. A malicious website hosting iLeakage uses JavaScript to open a new tab. In this example, it's the Instagram login page, but it could be any website. Any content in this new tab and anything you type into it, like passwords, even if, like in this case, they're autofilled by a password manager, it can all be read by the original iLeakage tab and sent right back to the hackers. And there's no way at all for you to tell that this tab is malicious, because this is the legit Instagram website. It's not just some phishing page. In another example, the iLeakage website spawns a tab for Gmail, and moments later, it's able to read and steal the contents of all your emails. This attack, described in a new research paper, exploits something called speculative execution, a feature of Apple Silicon which allows the CPU to guess what its next instruction might be before it actually knows. I realize it sounds complex, but stick with me here because it's actually rather simple. Say, for example, a CPU is executing code and it reaches an if statement. You'd think the CPU would stop to evaluate this statement before it continues but it'll take a bit of time to retrieve this value from memory. So instead of just waiting around, the CPU might just assume that the if statement is true and start executing the code. And if by the time the value is retrieved from memory, the if statement is in fact true, then great, the CPU has just saved a few nanoseconds of time and just continues executing. However, if it happens to be false, then the CPU will discard its operations and return to where it was beforehand. This is speculative execution in a nutshell. It's used by Intel, AMD, and ARM CPUs because it speeds up execution quite a bit, resulting in much faster processes. But just like you get bugs in code, you get bugs in CPUs too. And often it's possible to trick a CPU into running code it shouldn't, like access certain parts of memory that you don't have permissions to. And despite the fact that the CPU discards its calculations, sometimes it's possible to infer from the CPU's cache what that forbidden data really was. In fact, iLeakage is only the latest in a long line of high profile hacks to exploit speculative execution. And the bad news is, iLeakage is a very practical hack that could realistically catch a hell of a lot of people out. It's also highly undetectable, because this all happens within Safari. On top of that, because vulnerabilities like this reside in the CPU itself, they can be difficult to fix. And despite Apple being notified of this over a year before the paper was published, there still isn't a patch iLeakage only affects Safari on macOS, but on iOS it's a totally different story. Because Apple forces browser developers to use the same engine that powers Safari, Firefox, Chrome, and pretty much all third-party browsers will probably be vulnerable to this. However, there is some good news iLeakage can only steal data at about 20 to 30 bits per second, so it would take a while to grab a whole paragraph of text, and images and video are totally out of the question. Also, the researchers haven't published any proof of concept code, so it's not like cyber bad guys can just grab a few files from GitHub and start exploiting this. They'd need to be capable of understanding the research paper and have advanced knowledge of reverse engineering in order to recreate this, knowledge that very few people have. So whilst this hack hasn't yet been exploited in the wild, it might never be, but let's not tempt fate. The FBI has just put out a PSA warning that North Koreans are infiltrating US companies by applying for remote working jobs. It goes something like this. North Koreans, with the blessing of their dear leader, are setting up websites pretending to be legit technology companies. They contain fictitious portfolios of projects they claim to have worked on and profiles of their apparent employees. Then, the North Koreans leverage the identities of their fake employees and the work they've allegedly completed in order to apply for remote working jobs in Western companies. During the interview process, they'll refuse to appear on video calls or attend in-person meetings, for obvious reasons. And if the North Koreans are successful in getting a job, they will often do the work they're being paid for. But according to the US Department of Justice, in some instances, the IT workers would also infiltrate the computer networks of unwitting employers to steal information and maintain access for future hacking and extortion schemes. But regardless of how the money is obtained here, it's all sent back home to the motherland. Not to the workers' families, but rather to Kim Jong-un's regime. And according to the United Nations, just like the money North Koreans steal in their cryptocurrency hacks, it's all used to fund North Korea's nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs. 
And that's the whole aim here, making money to fund these programs. There's no interest in international cyber espionage at all. This is purely profit driven. But unfortunately for the North Koreans, a few days ago, the DOJ shut down the scheme, confiscating $1.5 million and seizing 17 domains that were being used to host these fraudulent company websites. According to the Wayback Machine, this has been going on a while. Some of these domains have been active since 2016. In fact, North Korea has a long history of shipping their citizens abroad to bring in money for Kim's regime. Coding jobs is just a recent addition to other, more labor-intensive jobs, like in construction, logging, and manufacturing. The countries in blue here are thought to have at some point hosted these North Korean workers. So yeah, this is a widespread problem. Some estimates say that North Korea is bringing in half a billion dollars a year from 100,000 overseas workers. Flipper Zero wielding kids have a new way to terrorize society because the recent denial of service attack against iPhones has now come to Android and Windows. So this all started a few weeks back when a security researcher, Tech Cryptic, developed a harmless but particularly annoying denial of service attack that causes prompts to connect to Bluetooth devices like AirPods and AirTags to completely overwhelm an iPhone to the point it becomes basically impossible to use. This works by taking advantage of Bluetooth advertising packets, which are used by Bluetooth devices to advertise their presence to other nearby devices. TechCryptic recorded the packets sent by an AirTag and isolated the advertising packets created when a new AirTag makes its presence known to nearby devices. Simply by replaying that packet over and over, you can cause mass confusion for all nearby iPhone owners. But this attack was made a whole lot worse by custom Flipper Zero firmware called Xtreme. They improved on the attack and created something they're calling a lockup crash. I'm not totally sure how this works as there just doesn't seem to be any documentation on it and it's only in their dev build right now, but this harnesses those advertising packets causing iPhones to become totally unresponsive and actually crash so you have to manually reboot them. But this Flipper Zero Extreme firmware has another new feature. The kitchen sink attack not only spams iPhones, but it also works against Android and Windows devices, flooding them with notifications to connect to seemingly random Bluetooth devices. In fact, on Windows and Android, it's actually possible to send custom messages, something the Flipper Zero TikTok kids are no doubt going to love. However, unlike on iPhones, where it's impossible to disable these messages without just completely turning off Bluetooth, on Windows and Android, you're just a setting away from disabling these notifications altogether. On top of that, the lockup crash only works on iOS. Malicious ads are still plaguing Google search. The latest case comes from researchers at Malwarebytes who discovered a highly convincing fake ad for the password manager KeePass. For a while, this held the first result in Google search and there's no red flag suggesting the ad is anything other than totally genuine. Well, other than the fact KeePass is free open source software, so the guys behind it obviously don't have any reason to run ads. But regardless, there's no typos, the favicon is correct, but more importantly, the domain is the genuine KeePass one. And if you click the link, there's nothing to suggest that the website is really just trying to get you to download malware, because everything seems legit. Well, apart from one very small detail, there's clearly something sus about the K in KeePass. If we copy and paste the URL somewhere, we can see the bad actors are abusing something called Punicode, a system that allows Unicode characters, like that funny K, to be used in domain names despite these characters not being supported by the domain name system. The XN indicates the domain contains Punicode, and the bit at the end is encoded data that says which Unicode characters are used and their position in the domain name. Whilst this is the real domain, browsers will automatically convert it to this, making the trick incredibly hard to detect. And whilst some browsers do warn you if a domain is suspected of abusing Punicode to substitute lookalike characters from Cyrillic or other alphabets, the bad actors in this case seem to have found an exception. However, this doesn't explain why Google was showing a regular K in the ad. Google's ad policies clearly state that whilst advertisers can modify the URL that's displayed in ads, it must use the same domain as the landing page. And the fact that Google has been struggling with such a simple problem of not showing the correct domain name has caused even the FBI to recommend using an ad blocker. In this case, the fake KeePass site is pretty similar to the legit one. The only difference, other than that sussy K, is that it's plastered with download links, encouraging you to install what is in reality malware known as FakeBat. 
Fake bats doesn't do much itself, rather this malware is only used to drop further malware. What that malware is, wasn't observed in this case. Whilst Google might be letting us all down, someone who isn't is today's sponsor. Akamai Connected Cloud is your Swiss army knife for cloud computing. These guys can handle everything cloud, and they're giving you a $100 60-day credit just to get started. One of their features that I love is their app marketplace, which makes it super easy to spin up servers with pre-configured software. Need an instance of Kali? Just configure the basics with their installer and you're done. So click the link in the description now to claim your free $100 credit. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.